What is the role of technology in the prophecies of the Bible? Find out on today's episode of A View from the Wall. Join I Am A Watchman Ministries Managing Editor Joe Kerr with co-host Dylan Burroughs, bringing you a fascinating discussion regarding the importance of Bible prophecy and Christian living today as it relates to our responsibility as believers to be watchmen. This is A View From The Wall. Welcome to A View From The Wall. I'm Dylan Burroughs here with co-host Joseph Kerr, and we are honored to join you today. Technology is often mentioned when it comes to the end times. We hear about a cashless society using digital currency or the mark of the beast involving a type of microchip. What are the details we should know about the growing prevalence of technology in our society? Joining us today to answer is Nathan Jones. Nathan is the online evangelist at Lamb and Lion Ministries, where he co-hosts the weekly television broadcast Christ and Prophecy with Dr. David Reagan. Nathan is the author and co-author of numerous books, including 12 Faith Journeys of the Minor Prophets, the Mighty Angels of Revelation, and many more. Nathan, welcome back to A View from the Wall. Good to be with you guys again. Well, great to be with you today. And we want to dive right in as we talk about technology in the last days today because it's fun to look at all the latest gadgets that are out there, whether it's the latest phone or the latest computer or other technology that we have in our hands as we walk about and do our lives. But as we look at how it intertwines with Scripture, you've written and taught about technology in the end times quite a bit. You're one of the few teachers who really sees the interactions between the end times signs as technology and uh, some of the technologies we have today. So talk a little bit as we get started. What do you mean about the end time signs, specifically referring to some of the technology that we deal with in our culture? Well, absolutely. Uh, I, uh, when I got out of Bible school back in the 90s, I, I had to go back to school because a uh, Bible degree won't really get you a job. So I went back to tech school and got out of tech school and became a web developer. And eventually I had my own business and uh, went on to become a web architect and then social media and uh, uh, video. And we would do whatever we could to, to get the gospel out there at a church I served at in Kentucky. And finally, uh, years ago, I ran into Dr. David Reagan when he was preaching at our church. And uh, he said, well, why don't you come and turn our website into a web ministry? And hence, being an internet evangelist, I was born. So I have a 20 years of technological background, and I never knew that at the time in the 90s, the internet really is, was just beginning to take off. And so I hadn't known that my mission field, because I was a missions minor, that it would be the internet. Now with over 4 billion plus people accessible over the internet, we live in a time period like no other where we can share the gospel with people all over the world. So uh, I kind of, when I read the Bible, I am able to pick out the technology in it, because we look at the Bible often and we'll say, well, that's that they were primitive, you know, they went around with clubs and stones and stuff. But even before the flood, mankind was able to use technology, which is the Greek technologia, which means to apply their knowledge to fix their problems and make things. And you can read even before the flood times, mankind had technology in the way of agriculture, textiles, weaponry, tools, construction, mining, Noah with, you know, shipbuilding, fermenting, medicine, transportation, writing. It's all over there in the Bible. So Technology isn't a modern aspect of our culture, but you can find it all the way back to the beginning of human history. And as I read through the Bible, and as a, an evangelist for Lamb and Lion Ministries, we proclaim the soon return of Jesus Christ. We focus on Bible prophecy, and I find at least nine particular signs that say that uh, technology will play a large role in the end times. Speaking specifically about the technology that you reference in the tribulation and, of course, what we talk about with the Antichrist, looking at the Bible prophecy, I mean, even the most recent was written almost 2,000 years ago, and it's kind of hard to tell from some of the strange language and the descriptions of creatures and, and what we would call technology. It's hard to tell whether they were talking about things that we've never heard of and still haven't seen or if they were describing technology. So... Of the Bible prophecies that we're familiar with in Daniel and Revelation, are there some of those that are specifically describing things that could only be technology? I, I believe so. I think one of the, the best verses in the whole Bible, you mentioned Daniel, is Daniel 12, 4. So Daniel just got this massive prophecy from the angel. He's confused. He doesn't understand it. He asked the angel for 
an explanation, and the angel says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end, the end time. And here's the two signs he gives. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So there's two signs right there. He says, in the last days, as we get closer to Jesus Christ setting up his kingdom, which is the fulfillment of the prophecies given to Daniel, that two major things would happen. One, knowledge would explode exponentially, and travel would explode exponentially. And those are the two foundational signs that we're seeing today. I mean, just think, if you just even go 100 years ago, how vastly different technology is, is than now. Go back 50 years, even go back 20 years ago, and look at your life and the technology you had then and then what you have now. And that's called the exponential curve. Uh, it's a curve that as each new advancement in technology rises and increases, that line, that exponential curve goes up and up and up more and more dramatically. And Jesus said, in the last days, the signs of the end times become quicker and more powerful, and he compared them to birth pains. And so we are now in this time period where we're seeing this exponential increase in both knowledge and travel, and those are both signs that point to the soon return of Jesus Christ. Well, that's amazing. Another area that uh, you've talked on before is space technology. If we look back a few years ago, space travel seemed to be limited to science fiction, to NASA. Now we have a space force and several private companies that are competing to take people to Mars in this generation. Is there anything about space technology connected with Bible prophecy? Well, there's two areas that I think uh, hint at. They are not direct signs per se. The one is that there that Bible lays out how the end times will play out. And one of those aspects you can find in Zechariah chapter 12 is that at the end time, at the end of the tribulation, all the nations of the earth, all of humanity, will be gathered for the purpose of trying to destroy Israel, the Jewish people, and prevent Jesus Christ from coming back. And so that gives us a hint or an idea that, well, we can't have humans then living on Mars or on extra lunar colonies or stuff like that. God is bringing judgment upon the whole world, all of humanity, and therefore all of humanity is still upon the earth. And therefore I believe then we have limitations to our space exploration. Uh, we will, we've will probably gone as far as we're going to go in this age. I'm hoping, I was, uh, my first year of college, I was a space science major before I moved into Bible. I love space science, I love outer space, I love science fiction. And I, I wanted to so much become an astronaut and travel around the galaxy, but that's not going to happen in our lifetime. We're lucky we're even making it back to the moon in the next 10 years. And so our technology is quite limited. I also believe there's a hint at it where it talks about the Antichrist ruling from high over the earth. And that uh, Isaiah 14, 12, one of the names for Satan was the morning star. Well, that is another name for the International Space Station. So, again, this is a tentative sign. But could Satan, through the Antichrist, be protected from all the destruction happened on the Earth by ruling and reigning from the space station. Again, I only throw that out as a tentative sign, but you got to wonder why we spent trillions of dollars on a space station. Are we just using it to test how earthworms live? I don't think so. These are some fascinating ideas as we look at how the end times can connect with the technologies we have today. We're going to take a quick break and continue our fascinating discussion with Nathan Jones. Stay with us here on A View From The Wall. From I Am A Watchman Ministries, here's today's I Am A Watchman Minute. Did you know that Isaiah was known as the Naked Prophet? For years, at the direction of God, Isaiah went about naked and barefoot, which is to say his upper body was uncovered, which was the look of a lowly servant. Isaiah preached for about 60 years, but never had a large following. His message was rejected by his people, and he was murdered on the orders of his king. But his faithfulness was noticed and rewarded by God. God used Isaiah to write an incredible book. His prophecies are quoted more times in the New Testament than any other prophet. Isaiah did not have the applause of men, but did have the smile of God, which is infinitely better, and we can too, if when we hear God call, we, like Isaiah, are quick to say, Hear my Lord, send me. Be bold, be faithful, be a watchman. I am a watchman.com.
Welcome back to A View from the Wall. As Joe and I continue our conversation with Nathan Jones from Lamb and Lion Ministries, we want to also focus on some of the positive ways technology is helping us reach people for Christ today. And I have to brag a little bit about Nathan. He didn't know I was going to do this, but one of the people who has been important in our ministry has been Jan Markell of Olive Tree Ministries. She is a veteran radio host, author, and speaker. And when she talks about Nathan, she has specifically said, I have appreciated the work of Nathan Jones for years. He is a gifted communicator who can effectively reach a younger generation with the hope of the Lord's imminent return. And we certainly appreciate his ministry here with us again today. And we want to spend a little bit of time in this segment talking about the positive ways technology is impacting people for Christ. We are reaching more people now than ever with the gospel because of some of the technology tools that we have in our hands. So as we continue talking, Nathan, how is tech helping the church fulfill the Great Commission and perhaps some ways of how it is hindering? Well, uh, praise the Lord. That's very kind of Jan to say. Uh, I think uh, all of us uh, are basically internet evangelists now. I mean, who isn't on the internet anymore? True. Uh, it's almost 100% of, of Generation Z, which are my children's generation, and it's all, all the way up to 86% of uh, the Generation X, which it happens to be my generation. So uh, even older people, it's uh, 76% of people that are over 65 are using the internet right now. So we all have the opportunity to connect to people around the world I, my first leadership conference where I was teaching internet evangelism was all the way back in 2003. And uh, the church, uh, I was one of the top 10 biggest churches in America at the time. But for the life of me, I could not convince them the advantage of using internet technology to reach people beyond the four walls. Churches were locked into this idea that it mattered more if people came and sat in the pulpit than were connected to and given the gospel. And it's a, uh, I think things are changing in that area, and hopefully we'll, we'll talk about that a little more. But uh, we live in a time period that is the same that Jesus gave us back there in Matthew 28, verse 19. He said, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So that's the church's walking papers. That's our commandment. We are to go out and evangelize the world. Well, we saw what 12 apostles did just spreading out over the Roman Empire, how in 300 years Christianity became the dominant religion of Europe. Now we live in a time period where we have the entire world uh, covered with the Internet. They are putting, uh, SpaceX is putting satellites up, they're putting balloons over African continents. They're trying to connect every person on the planet through the Internet. And so that gives us, while we still have the freedom to do so, the opportunity to share the gospel, whether we're talking in a chat room or a, a, a social media group, whether we're posting articles or videos online, uh, there are just so many different opportunities to share the gospel with people. And uh, I, I love what you guys do with I'm a Watchman. You understand that. You know that, that the Internet is the best way to reach people. All the different media technologies, the television, radio, it's all merging into this one giant massive communication system which I believe the Lord has given us because the time is short. He's coming soon, and he wants us to reach as many people as possible as quickly as possible before the Lord returns. Nathan, you mentioned how things have changed in the last couple of years, and the pandemic isn't over yet, so that may continue. But there are a lot of mega churches, even still today, with many of them open, that have seating capacity for 5,000 people, and there are 200 people there on Sunday morning. So we've had to reimagine ministry to a large extent. Most churches that had the capability switched to online ministry pretty smoothly, but me, well, many even expanded their reach. So let's make it real practical. If you were going to talk to those churches and those pastors who are struggling with that, what's some basic tech that churches should embrace going forward? Well, we're now a year past the beginning of the pandemic. And if any church hasn't got on board with online services, then I'm amazed that their churches are still open. <laughs> it was the only, my church was closed for months. And our only way of doing service was through the online and uh, I had been championing that for many, many years. Uh, but the old adage is true that churches are 20 years behind the technological curve, and that is very true. Churches tend to be uh, very slow at, at adopting 
technology to help further their outreach. They prefer the more personal one-on-one, and, and who doesn't, right? I, I'm a firm advocate in meeting with people just as uh, Hebrews order uh, commands the church to meet in person and talk. But uh, when pandemic came, it caught a lot of churches off guard. Some of them had already been starting to post their sermons at YouTube. Some started adding streaming services. Some start adding uh, social media groups where they can keep in touch. And now that the pandemic's waning, they still need that technology. They're kind of merging it into going back into the service. For instance, in uh, my church's Bible study, you can sit in there and with other people and listen to the teacher teach. And in the back of the room, those who have joined us by, by Zoom are in the back as well. And they're watching and they're asking questions just as if they're in, they're in the room. And what's neat about that is that the people joining in Zoom don't have to be local. We have some guys that live in different states. Some people live in different countries. I was teaching at a church up in northern Canada, a little Mennonite church that had about 300 people, but they had 10,000 people from China join them every week for church services. So uh, that's the, the wonderful thing about the technology that the Lord's given us today. Uh, people want to know really more about that. Phil Cook, he's a media guru. I followed his writings over the last year. He's a consultant to churches and organizations, and he's very strongly adamant that churches cannot give up the streaming portion and the online connectivity of their churches because he estimates almost a third of people will not be returning to their buildings. One thing I find that's interesting is in Easter of 2020, it was considered the Sunday that the internet had seen more evangelism take place than any other time in world history because most churches were forced to stream online only that Sunday, and almost every church was streaming online that Sunday about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it can be used for good, as well as some of the concerns that we've shared earlier on. But one thing before we go to break, we have about a minute, and I want you to talk just for a moment about some of the concerns we we may run into as we start digital ministries, but then run into people who control those outlets such as YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, who sometimes censor those messages that we post. Absolutely. Uh, big tech is uh, humanistic. There are a lot of them, their leaders and their staff aren't even from America, so they don't value free speech. Uh, we're seeing a rise in uh, people who bow to Marxism and socialism and therefore totalitarianism. And they don't believe that conservative or Christian content needs to be on the air. Even uh, almost weekly, I'm hearing of another ministry shut down by big tech. Yesterday, just two alone, uh, YouTube just drops their channels without any kind of explanation. And they knew if they could get away with doing that to a president like Donald Trump, they can do it to the rest of us. And we're beginning to see a purge of Christian's uh, content and the gospel. Uh, but, you know, that's leading up to the Antichrist kingdom. Uh, he's going to purge it all, likely after the rapture of the church. But I firmly believe that our best years of ministry are ahead of us after the rapture, while that time is short, that window is short, that we can get the gospel out. Well, that's a wonderful perspective. And we'll have more on that right after the break. So stick with us here for more on A View from the Wall. The rapture can happen at any time. You may be ready, but are your friends and family spiritually prepared for the coming of the Lord? What will happen to those left behind? We've created a new resource to help you help them. It's called the Rapture Kit. Included in the Rapture Kit is a Bible and vital information on what the Rapture is and how to prepare for what's to come. The Rapture Kit also includes eight books on prophecy, apologetics, the Christian walk, and being a watchman for the Lord, plus a number of video and audio teachings all preloaded on an eight gigabyte flash drive. Become more strategic and active in your witnessing. Warn the lost about the coming rapture and help individuals in the post-rapture world be drawn to Christ, equipping them to become the next generation of ministry leaders. Learn more and order at rapturekit.org.
Welcome back. As Joe and I continue our discussion with Nathan Jones from Lamb and Lion Ministries, we want to remind you to go to our website, IamAWatchman.com. That's IamAWatchman.com. And when you do, there will be a section where you can sign up for our email newsletter, where you can get all of our updates without concern of censorship and without being worried about missing the latest news. You have to go there now. IamAWatchman.com. Get all the latest information at our website. As we continue today, we couldn't do a program on tech in the last days without talking about this idea of artificial intelligence, what's called AI. So Nathan, what should we know about AI and does it have any relevance to what we talk about in End Times Prophecy? Well, that's the million dollar question. Uh, just before the pandemic came, I went out to a big conference in Vegas of all the big tech companies and they were all talking AI. That was the number one topic. And we got to bear in mind that artificial intelligence uh, immediately, most people say artificial intelligence, well, Terminator, you know, they jump right to the Terminator, right. a self-conscious, aware computer, basically that's life, that humans have created life. Uh, but this conference made it very clear that when we're talking about AI, we're talking about machine learning. Uh, again, there's no creativity, there's no real thought process. A machine learns to anticipate questions. A lot of AI is really used for customer service space, so you don't need people it answers questions for you and stuff like that. Uh, the idea, too, is that more computer systems are obviously running more things, even your car, your computer systems running your car. So the smarter it is, the better it can handle more things and the less that the user has to use it. So when I look at AI, I don't believe that humanity is going to create a sentient being. Uh, we do, have not been given the gift of creation. Satan even doesn't have it. God and God alone can create uh, life. And so an AI, like, Skynet on Terminator is beyond our capability. But can we create a supercomputer smart enough to beat men in chess? Well, yeah, it's already been done. Can we create it to simulate life? Well, we read about how the Antichrist will set up, or his false prophet will set up a living image of him that interacts with people. And so very well, that could be artificial intelligence running it. Certainly, you need artificial intelligence to run the vast computer systems, especially the economic systems around the world. So unintelligent AI, I guess I could say, has a future and definitely a future, but as a, a separate sentient being, I don't believe so. Well, let me jump in here. Speaking of conferences, you have a conference coming up soon with Lamb and Lion Ministries. Tell us more about that. Well, Lamb and Lion Ministries every year holds uh, our big annual conference here in the Dallas area. This year it's July 17th. And uh, Dr. David Reagan, myself, Tim Moore, our new director, uh, we're bringing in Pastor Bob Russell and Alan Franklin from uh, Great Britain. And we're going to talk about the end times. And uh, as Dr. Reagan is retiring this year, uh, semi-retiring, I should say, we'll have a kind of a time of uh, to say goodbye to him and people meet him. People can sign up for this conference. Uh, it's in person this year. And uh, it's right on our website, ChristinProphecy.org. We also hold regional conferences and streaming conferences. And in October, we're teaming up with Billy Crone of Get a Life Ministries and we're going to be holding a regional conference at his church on October 16th and 17th. Nathan, you talked about discussing this at a church all the way back in 2003, and we're coming up in almost 20 years since you started really emphasizing this in ministry. Is there anything in 20 years that's really just kind of shocked you that, you, wow, didn't see that coming in technology, especially as it relates to end times prophecy applications? I think back in 2009 or 2010, we brought Mark Hitchcock on our television show, Christ in Prophecy, and he'd written a book called Cashless about the coming cashless society, and he was saying that everything would be tied to cell phones. Now, this is before smartphones even came out, and Mark was like, yes, uh, your cell phone is going to be the, the connecting device of the future, and I was really skeptical. You know, I tried not to be skeptical when I was on the air with him. Well, we brought him back uh, maybe three years ago to talk about the same subject again. I had to apologize. I said, Mark, you were right. I had no idea that cell phones would take over the world like they have it when they became smartphones. I mean, just drive by a bus stop full of students or people waiting for an Amway train or whatever. You see, people are absorbed in their devices. I wrote a whole chapter about that, actually, in the book Lawless that Terry James edited about people's addictions to cell phones and smartphones and all the technology that it has to offer, and that how Satan's using that to create a new ethos and a new culture that's shared around the world. So that's the biggest thing that I've seen in the last 20 years, is how smartphones have people become addicted to it, and they're being used to reprogram us 
into that new type of culture and ethos that Satan will then use to build his kingdom. We like to wrap each program with some specific application to our watchmen and women who listen. Give a challenge and some application to them as they fulfill their calling to watch, warn, witness, and finish well in these last days. What do they need to know about technology and how it can help them in their watchmen responsibilities? Well, I would say there's two main applications that I would take out of this. As watchmen in the wall, as all Christians should be, that we know that we're living in a time period unlike any other Do you know that you can reach 88% of the United States using the internet? China is up to 54%. The entire world, 55%. So we live in a time period as watchmen that we know we recognize the signs of the time, and the sign of technology is one of them. But two, that we utilize to evangelize. Go out there, and it's so easy. You don't even have to be a missionary to go overseas anymore. You can go right in your house, and you can share the gospel with people all over the world. So those are the two things I would say, recognize the times and utilize to evangelize. Well, those are some great applications. As we wrap up today, where can people go to get more information about you and about your ministry? Well, Lamb and Lion Ministries' website is ChristInProphecy.org, or you can download our Lamb Lion app on all the major platforms. That's great. Yeah, we do encourage you to do that. Their app is phenomenal. And again, that's ChristInProphecy.org. And we really appreciate you, Nathan, being here with us again today. Great blessing to be on. Thank you, gentlemen. And for those of you listening today, let us say how much we appreciate you for joining us for today's program and that we are here to serve you. Join us again next time and enjoy all of our programs at IamAWatchman.com. A View from the Wall, in association with I Am a Watchman Ministries, exists to equip a worldwide audience with biblical truth, sharing it with others, and being prepared for Christ's imminent return. The team seeks to encourage, inspire, and equip watchmen for such a time as this. For information about the ministry and upcoming events, visit IamAWatchman.com. A View from the Wall is made possible by the team of dedicated pastors, editors, and the many contributors of I Am A Watchman Ministries. To support our efforts, give online at IamAWatchman.com and click on the donate button. Thanks for listening and join us again next time on A View from the Wall.